Hi, how are you? In this time, we are talking about forging and exploiting virtual channels in Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol for fun and profit. First, let us introduce you. I'm Chan Sung Park. I'm a graduate student at Sein Lab, Korea University. I'm CTO of Defense Security Startup in Korea. Young Jin Jang, he is an assistant professor of computer science, Oregon State University. Sung Joo Kim, he is a professor at Korea University at, and my academic advisor. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, I'm Ki Teng Lee. I am a doctoral student at Sein Lab at Korea University, and I work as an offensive security researcher at Samsung Research. Okay, let's talk about our research. First, we will talk about the why we attack RDP client rather than RDP server. Next, we will talk about the puzzle to find the vulnerability. Finally, we will show you attack technique using this vulnerability. Now, motivations. Hackers are using some RDP server to shadow their IP address to attack. Hack the Windows servers are configured as a RDP server. Victim can only see the IP address of the RDP server. These stories uh, were informally heard from security researcher in Korea. No proof, but from off the record discussion with the security analyst, can we attack an RDP client to counterattack an evil attacker? We began our research from this interesting idea. We start this research to counterattack bad guys, but we did not use this technique in public because, yes, it's illegal. So we would like to share our journey for such a cool motivation in these presentations. Here, another note. Some part of this research cannot be disclosed by the restriction applied to one of the speakers. But we will disclose as much as we can to entertain the audience. <coughs> Next, let's go on MS RDP client. Okay, let's talk about the RDP and the RDP client. The official RDP client is a Microsoft product. To attack the RDP client, we analyze the RDP client by reversing. We have analyzed those two files mainly like this. There are more than 50 reference documents for MSRDP, for example, pre-RDP's wiki. Thank you, pre-RDP's wiki. It's very important. Pre-RDP is an open source program based on RDP reference document. We have studied RDP by analyzing pre-RDP source code. A recent presentation about the RDP client is a poisoned RDP. It released at Black Hat USA in this year. In this presentation, they found the vulnerabilities that the past traveler attack was possible in the copy and paste sections. But we focus on the memory corruption vulnerability. RDP client is an application that you can connect to another remote desktop. When you use the RDP client, you can control the remote desktop and uh, you can use the program and files. Most people use the MSTSC as the RDP client. There are five types of RDP clients. MSTSC 
Windows 10 app, Android app, iOS app, Mac OS app. How many RDP clients are there? We assume all these share the same code based for the protocol. Our goal is uh, to exploit RDP client. To find the exploitable memory corruption vulnerability in official RDP client, we will explain. Uh, we will exploit the RDP client by sending malicious data from the RDP server using the virtual channel. If it's success, we will be able to learn calculator, just like another hackers. What's the virtual channel? The virtual channel is one of the functions provide RDP. This channel allows the RDP client to access certain hardware, audio, and so on. <coughs> Sorry. Some virtual channel can be selected and used by client. If you are learning the RDP client, enable channels are clipboard, sound output, printers, smart, smart card, and so on. These channels can be on or off by the RDP client. However, some channels cannot be disabled by user, such as uh, echo and uh, DRDY and VC. It is a dynamic virtual channel name. The channels are always enabled automatically. Internally, the heading of such features include the protocol parsing logic, lots of heap memory allocation pre. So it's a great target for purging. At first, when we did our research, we considered how to use virtual channel. While we were studying the RDP reference and pre-RDP, we found the APIs that use the virtual channels. We could use these APIs to pause the virtual channel. These virtual channels can be written using the following APIs. Open server function can get a handle from the connected sessions. The server name's parameter is localhost. The open channel function opens a handle to the server end of the specified virtual channel. It takes a con connected session's handle and virtual channel name as an argument. Lead channel function is a function to read data for the specific channels. Write channel function write the data to the server end of a virtual channel. RDP server and client can exchange data through this channel. Cross channel function close the open, the open channel. Cross server function close the open handle to the remote desktop sessions. This is simple code written four bytes using open server, open channel, and write channel. In this way, we can send and receive data on the specific peak virtual channel. Now, a tech scenario we are manipulating the virtual channels. Using this virtual channel, we can send our data from the RDP server to RDP client. So we create this attack scenario for a memory corruption vulnerability in the you know, processing of our sending malicious data from the RDP server to RDP client. 
From now on, Chun Sung will explain them in more details. <coughs> ah. Next, finding vulnerabilities automatically built on RDP client forger. We talked about sending malicious data using virtual channels from the RDP server to the RDP client. We expected the explo exploitable crash when processing this malicious data on the client. Our requirements are as follows. Need to hook virtual channels, need to work with a server client model, need, need, need to apply a black box forging on Windows, but we won't enable coverage guided forging, like AFL. Win AFL is the further that fits most of these requirements. Of course, there is no function to use a virtual channel, but all other conditions are satisfied. Win AFL is a fork of AFL for forging Windows binaries. Win AFL works by measuring coverage and giving you more coverage. It mutates the seed file and acts as a structure to measure coverage by running the target program. Win AFL is very similar to AFL. However, Win AFL leads to specified target module and offset to hook the function and measure the code coverage. AFL works by automatically setting the code coverage measurement interval to the beginning of the program run. <clears throat> this is the difference between using AFL and Win AFL. Win AFL performs instrumentation to measure code coverage. Instead of instrumentating the code at comp compilation time, Win AFL supports the following instrumentation mode. First, dynamic instrumentation using Dynamo Rio. This, this method is slow. Second, is to measure code coverage using hardware tracing using the Intel PT. This method is not available in VM. Last, static instrumentation via CGG. This method was difficult to apply due to limitations. Restriction, um, <coughs> sorry. Restriction is like that, like that in the slide. Your binary should be a Win32P binary linked, the, linked with the profile flag and statically, statically linked to the CRT. And your binary should be compiled with the rebel function linking enabled and buffer security checks disabled. We decided to work with Dynamo Rio with in-app persons mode. This is a detailed description of persons mode. As mentioned earlier, when AFL cannot use virtual channels, so we changed the architecture of WinAFL to use virtual channels. This is our further architecture for RDP client. WinAFL be run on the client. WinAFL checks code coverage and it mutates seed file, then namely core input. Next, send a, uh, next it sends a core input file to the server. The server receives score input file from WinAFL. The content of score input will be sent using the virtual channel. Original architecture of WinAFL is like this. And 
This is our Win AFL for forging the RDP client. This is RDP client PC and RDP server PC. This is RDP Win AFL forger. This is MSTSC. This is virtual channels and server side. RDP forger executes just one time to MSTSC. RDP forger applied mutation to file and send it to the server. Server sends call input to MSTSC using virtual channel. This loop constructed by the in-app persistence mode. <clears throat> now, applying the RDP client forger, there are several virtual channels that are enabled by default. Among them, we targeted the RDP SND channel at first, which functions as an audio output. The reason is that the audio output function only needs to send data in one way, from the server to the client. Note, other channels are two-way channels. The options, uh, the options for audio output are checked in the play on, play on this computer box as follows. If this option is disabled, the server cannot send data to the client using RDP SND channel. This slide explains the server audio format and version PDU. You can see that it contains headers, flags, and so on. The header consists of message type, padding, and body size. Message type is a very important value. So if the forger mutates, changing this value will not make the forging effective. This is the capture of forging to RDP SND channel. Two unique crashes were found after four hours of runtime. <coughs> ah, sorry. <coughs> uh, how to get a CD file for further? We logged the incoming data by hooking into the virtual channel's incoming section to create a seed file. I hooked it up to log data, then played the music so that no more data was logged. This logged data was used as the seed file for forging. The following showed the code processed by message type in free RDP source code. It is supposed to look at the value of message type and use the switch statement to call a function whose functions are handled. This is message type. So if a non-branching value in, in this switch statement enters message type, it will be meaningless forging. So it's important to keep the message type. <coughs> so far, we have shown our research for forging the RDP SND channel, which is responsible for the audio output function. In this way, channels have different functions and process PDUs in different structures. Forging other channels for future features will make a good result for you. 
I will show my demo for the LDP client further in last slide. Our further end code will be released next year. Next, running the RDP client forger. Forging setup, both the RDP client and the RDP servers run in each VM. Running on Windows 7, one core, two giga memory, two VMs are required, one for RDP client, one for RDP server. The first vulnerability was found within two hours of running the RDP client forger. We keep reporting vulnerabilities to MS. Using PageHip is effective for forging. Slow, but this will generate crash if any heap error happens during forging. There are seven vulnerabilities that targeted RDP clients in 2019. Among them, this uh, past traversal vulnerability found by Checkpoint researcher. Uh, no comment on this report, but guess who reported this? <laughs> and suddenly, MSRC patched for vulnerabilities, add-ons, we don't know exactly where the code was patched. We didn't, we didn't add analysis. Previous vulnerability might have been affected to MSRC. This, is report, uh, this report is by Yong Yil Lee of Defense Company. Yeah, he's my boss. <laughs> In the future, vulnerabilities of the RDP client will be found and patched. For the next, we will describe how to exploit the vulnerability found by the, our RDP client forger by combining information leak and remote code execution vulnerabilities. We will break the ASLR by exploiting an information leak vulnerability in the RDP client. We will achieve remote code execution by exploiting an RCE vulnerability in the RDP client. The RCE vulnerability in our demo is a heap vulnerability. So to change them, we need to manipulate heap object, need heap feng shui. Now, RDP heap feng shui. We could heap feng shui using dynamic virtual channels. DRDYNVC is a dedicated channel for delivering dynamic data. <coughs> we explain it based on the pre RDP source code. In this case, the value corresponding to message type is CMD value. Switch CMD. Each function is called, called by the CMD, data first PDU, data PDU, close request PDU. We can call them as we want. Data first video calls to malloc. <laughs> malloc. <laughs> if you follow the functions called through data first video, as expected, you can see that you malloc the size which you send. Data PDU calls to main copy. Stream copy is main copy. Send the data PDU, we can call main copy. <clears throat> 
when closed channel function is called, it calls free. So we having an arbitrary control over malloc, mencapi, and free. This part has been removed due to the restriction of one of our speakers. Do not be disappointed. We will show you a demo of the full chain RC exploit. Now demo, we will show exploiting an information leak vulnerability we use of an initialized memory affected to MSTSG, Windows 10 app, Android app, iOS app, macOS app. We will demo for MSTSC on Windows 10. I checked the version of the target and the version of Windows. I check the update status. I run the exploit to read. Oh. You can check on uninitialized memory. I fill in the value OXFF with OX11 using Hifeng Sui and read it. I can check the rigged memory and see that barrier filled with OX11. Next, we will demo on Android. Our assumption on sharing the code base among those seems true. Fudge MSTSC and pun four more. I tested it on the Android emulator. The test environment was installed by Android 7. The RDP client app is version 8.1 released in I can read the values I put in using Hifeng Sui. We will demo how can we break the ASLR of the client machine by launching a memory rig attack on Windows 7. Image based address. I connect the server using an RDP client.
and I run the exploit to rig. Then the server can find out the image base address of mstsc.ax.dll on the client. This and this. <coughs> Lastly, we will demo RC on Windows 7, our shellcode execute calc. I connect the server as an RDP client. I run RDP heap feng shui. I read the image base address in mstsgax.dll. And I try to overflow attack. Because of the nature of the vulnerability, it takes some time. So we need patience. We run the calculator using our shell code. In the future, we will forge on other channels. We are already doing forge some channels. We have learned how can we apply coverage-guided fudging to Windows application, server client model, application with no source code available without modifying the binary program. Don't be afraid the application runs over server client and does not accept file input. Our LDP forger can run with other server client applications in Windows, so let's discover more bugs for fun and profit. Lastly, we will demo RDP client further. So we will prepare the live demo, okay? <laughs> So this is the RDP server. So this is the RDP client. So we try to connect to the RDP server using the, the RDP client. So we learned uh, our program on server.
WTS Open Server, and uh, write file, close, close the function. It's very simple program. So we tr we start the APS. So APL. So you can show the total pass is increasing, right? The speed is uh, 400 per second. This this directory is a source of WinFL. This code is a modified for us. This is a connect server AAPL RDP. This is demo, <laughs> video, skipped. <laughs> ah. uh, that's it. I hope our presentation gives you a lot of ins inspiration and hints for finding vulnerabilities. If you have any questions, mm, please feel free to ask me. And if you can, email us and we will answer you in more detail. Thank you.